Hello, everyone. I hope you, you enjoy the lunch. There are a bunch of um, uh, unique uh, lunch boxes, uh, bento in Japan. So, uh, uh, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Secure World Foundation and the Cabinet Office of Japan uh, to host this uh, summit for space sustainability. Um, today's my presentation is overlapping with what I, what I did for Space Tide uh, on Monday, but since you are expert in this area, I go, my narratives to you are more direct. <laughs> so, you know, this is a science and technology museum. And then, did you see the kids and uh, students were kind of walking around? Can we tell them in future, sorry, we had a summit for space sustainability in Tokyo in 2024, but unfortunately, we could not preserve space sustainability due to various reasons and un uncontrollable reasons. Can we say that? No. That these kids live up to 22nd century. And we have to preserve the space sustainability now. So, um, and it's easy to say, but very hard to take actions. But I'm quite... Sorry for using bad word. I'm quite fed up with study, research, simulation, concepts. We have to take actions because clock is ticking. And I know it's not easy, but we are also working, that's why we are working with stakeholders globally and to how we can realize space sustainability. So uh, today, let, let us explain where we are. And, and then understand where we are, and we'd like to collaborate more with you. Oh. Um, I don't have to explain this, you know, the, 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 the number of satellites and uh, number of debris have increased uh, so much over the last several years, and space is going to be more congested by 2030. And then, so the space, the risk is increasing, and the return is decreasing. So a, the blue line, the left chart, explains the number of near misses between satellites and debris within one kilometer within one month. So uh, up to 2020, the number of near misses were around 2,000 times per month, which was 66 times per day, which is already horrible, but it increased by threefold in 2021. So the density of objects in space has kind of reached a critical level and chain reaction of collision can happen at any near future. And the right chart uh, is the data from the Leo Labs uh, that they observed at least seven large debris, uh, near misses between large debris within 20 meters. It was almost uh, hitting each other. So once again, in space, risk is increasing, return is decreasing. So we have to flip this. The fundamental cause of this unsustainable space environment is lack of a value chain in space industry. So look at the automotives, ships, or airlines, or infrastructure. They all have post-sales servicing support. However, space industry has been throwaway culture. So that's why most of the satellites and rockets are not recycled, reused, repaired, defueled, nor removed. So Astroscale was born to fill the gap to complete the value chain of the space industry. So this missing chain is called Unorbit Servicing, or OOS, or IOSM, or IOS, or ISAM, or whatever. Anyway, it's Unorbit Servicing. People had talked about uh, on orbit servicing opportunities, but uh, uh, the commercially available technology did not exist. So the, the technology used for these um, uh, services is called RPO technologies, Rendezvous and Proximity Operation Technologies. So this RPO technologies and approach and dock capability enable us uh, for multiple wide range of the on-orbit servicing. So once mastered, once mastered, we can approach and dock with objects and relocate, remove, refuel, 
repair, or whatever. And it's not just simple uh, technologies, but uh, we, we are proving that. We'll talk about this. Let me talk about astro scale. Our vision is to uh, ensure safe and sustainable development of space, and that's it. And uh, when I founded Astroscale 11 years ago, I got so many no's. People told me it would be impossible to develop technologies. It would be impossible to influence um, government policies. And you cannot make a successful business case. But today is different. Still, this market is nascent, but I should say today is different. Um, we are headquartered in Japan with five offices uh, around uh, 600 people. And we're quite diverse. Our team consists of more than 36 nationalities. And we, our, team, our offices are open 24 hours a day somewhere in the world. And uh, last month, we had an IPO in Tokyo Stock Exchange market, which, is, which was an amazing milestone for us. But however, to be honest, I still feel like we are just beginning of the journey. But having IPO means the global equity investors now recognize the significance of the space sustainability, also the uh, market opportunity for on-orbit servicing. Our team is so global, and to meet the growing demand, we have uh, clean rooms in each entity, like in the UK, Japan, US, and Israel. And we recently set up an office in France and so that we can hire amazing talent in each, uh, each region and develop technology and satellites. And otherwise, we cannot, you know, the, there's a woeful talent globally in the space industry, so otherwise we cannot have the great talent of team globally. One of our core principles is develop core technologies by ourselves. So uh, RPO technology did not exist uh, in the world. So that's another reason why we have to do that. But uh, we designed the satellite assemble test by ourselves. Uh, we developed multiple uh, capture mechanism, mechanism like magnetic capture or mechanical capture mechanism. Also software and algorithm uh, we developed by ourselves. And we have operation centers in UK and Japan right now to cover the sphere 24 hours a day. And we are also developing uh, operation center in US too. So we get questions from investors. How you make money? To do this kind of strategy, globally, concurrently establish entities and solve this space sustainability issue there's no market, and we develop technologies by ourselves, but having cream room by ourselves, it needs a lot of capex. Capex is capital expenditure. And then investors' question is how we make money. The, to be honest, until four years ago, our revenue was less than one million US dollars per year, just a kind of a small fraction of the revenue. But today is different. Um, the, after we proved the technology, RPO technologies uh, a couple of years ago, we you know, um, started capturing the business opportunities globally and adding up pipelines right now. The, uh, the, our most recent uh, order backlog, order backlog is a order we got, is around 28.5 billion Japanese yen. In dollar term, it's, you know, it's around 200 million US dollars, uh, depending on the exchange rate. Uh, but uh, the two years ago, our order backlog was just, just uh, 1 billion or something. So uh, 1 billion Japanese yen or something. Uh, so uh, the, the, you can see the demand has increased by an, an order of a magnitude. So we are having uh, four business lines right now. So end of life service or EOL. Uh, to mitigate the debris generation, and we are uh, talking with uh, Constellation players. We are selling docking plate, the small plate, uh, it's a couple hundred grams, and so that they can pre-mount docking plate onto their satellites before the launch. 
And then once the satellite goes defunct, we can easily identify approach and capture with a magnetic mechanic, uh, capture mechanism, which is actually we can provide cheaper the removal service to them. And currently, uh, we're working closely with OneWeb, which got platinum uh, space accessibility rating. Uh, uh, 568 their satellites have docking plates uh, already in space. So uh, we are uh, working with them for demonstration mission uh, uh, backed by the European Space Agency. And we are also talking with other constellation players for end of life services. Active debris removal is to, um, for the remediation. So removing the existing debris up there in space. And there are significantly um, large objects, uh, like one ton, three ton, five ton size debris. We have to remove them right now. And then we are uh, closely working with the government, the customers of government, because commercial company cannot pay for that. And so uh, we are talking with the government. And uh, as you heard from the uh, previous uh, debris removal uh, sessions, uh, we are closely working with the JAXA uh, and also UK Space Agency and CUNAS uh, for this active debris removal. And uh, uh, life extension service is uh, especially for the uh, geostationary orbit and uh, to extend their lives. Uh, there are two ways to extend their life. The one is for the, uh, to dock with the satellite which run out of fuel and move to the right orbit or uh, help them the station keeping with you by using our fuel. Or we can approach a dock and uh, defuel them. So uh, the, our US team uh, uh, last year uh, got awarded with a defueling satellite uh, project uh, from Space Force. And then I believe you know, this refueling technolo technology will totally change the space architecture. Suppose you, know, you drive a car without you know, stopping by the gas stand. Your mobility is quite limited. But if you can stop by a gas stand, you, know, you can think about more wider kind of a itinerary. So we have to, the refueling technology will change the space architecture dramatically. ISSA is Institute Space Situational Awareness, which is kind of an inspection mission. We will not dock, but we just inspect the mission. And we have a couple of the uh, uh, missions already contracted. So this is just the beginning of the own servicing, but I believe the demand, more demand will come, especially from the institutional uh, uh, customers, but also we see the big interest from commercial customers. So let's talk about uh, technologies. So we are taking actions, real actions. That is a technological advancement. So uh, we have two satellites up there in space. Uh, the, the upper one is LSA-D, which we launched three years ago. And uh, we brought up uh, capturing satellite and a dummy debris together and separate out, captured. Separate out far away and approach and again and identify the object. So uh, we successfully completed the mission and lowered down the orbit uh, toward the end of last year and so that our satellite will burn up in the atmosphere within, uh, within a couple of years to be compliant with the future regulations. Lower one is Address J, uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 we launched two, uh, this February. This is the world's first real debris inspection mission. And so Address J is, again, um, the, this, is a, uh, this program is called CRD2, initiated by JAXA. And we were selected as a partner in the Astro scale design, develop, and launch, and operate satellite with the support of JAXA. So we really appreciate this um, uh, kind of epoch-making um, initiative by JAXA. And then we learn a lot from them. And so the client object is a rocket upper stage of the H2A rocket, which is a three ton, 11 meter size, gigantic one. And uh, let me show you uh, what we did. Oh, so this is a collaboration with a wonderful collaboration with JAXA. So the, uh, the CONAPS start with uh, absolute navigation followed by initial checkout. And then once we spot the debris, uh, we will transfer to the relative navigation and then uh, we enter the safety ellipse. It's kind of a non-collision uh, trajectory, so as not to collide, even if something wrong happens to our satellites. And then, and 
Then we approach the 50 meters back from the client and ob observe. So this is our mission of the Adrashe. And let me show you what exactly happened to Adrashe. So at the absolute navigation, we could not see anything. It's a blackout. But uh, we actually spotted, located uh, the client debris as a dot. Then when we get closer, mm, we see the client with multiple pixels. So oh, gradually we can sh see the shape of the client. Then we approached the couple hundred, uh, several, hundred kilo, um, several hundred meters away, and then uh, we took the first photo image of the client. And this is not the ending. So then we even get closer and approach the 50 meters. And this is a time-lapse sequence of the real debris uh, passage and uh, uh, the one revolution of around the Earth. So what, what, what can you see from here? So actually, the, there were a bunch of papers wrote a kind of motion of the debris and the a kind of a, or a kind of aging of the materials, and we found the answer. So this observation gave us a lot of implication of the designing the passage, or uh, the kind of a, uh, also the motion of the uh, debris, and also we plan to ha have a debris removal of this object later. Um, and then, we, you know, since the rotation is quite stabilized, we found a strategy for uh, approaching this uh, uh, client. So this got a lot of implications, and uh, definitely we will uh, share uh, these uh, findings in uh, uh, some conferences, a global conference going forward. So uh, our team explained this morning, uh, but uh, uh, this is not just a technological demonstration, but also policy demonstration. And then we followed the uh, Japanese government on orbit servicing guidelines, and then we uh, ensure the safety measures. So th there are three key points. Number one, we got permissions from the debris order, also the uh, project order. Number two, uh, we uh, had a, a safety collision. So like a trajectory, de trajectory design, for example, we had extensive simulation uh, considering the realistic uh, uh, the realistic uh, the perturbation uh, errors and the disturbances in space. And also the spacecraft system, we um, came up with the extensive list of the failure mode uh, so that we can automatically detect, isolate, and recover uh, uh, from those failures. And uh, thirdly, in, uh, in the ground system, we had a safety monitor system. In the operations, we defined waypoint for go and no-go decisions uh, so to check the satellite health every time. And overall, the uh, Adrashe or satellite uh, had a one fail tolerance uh, so solution. So it secured safety. And uh, transparency, we actually provided, uh, providing uh, SSA data uh, to the SSA providers uh, so that they can track us anytime. So in the transparency, uh, we disclose this kind of uh, stuff so that we are quite open no, we are just open. You know, we had a, I know, for active debris removal, removal there was a dual use concern. But no, our usage is a peaceful use of purpose. So we are quite transparent. So uh, recently, we got awarded with next phase mission to remove this object from space. And this is called uh, CLD2 Phase 2. And our team in Japan are working hard uh, to develop this right now. This is the last slide. When I started Astroscale, there was kind of a um, reservation to discuss about active debris removal uh, because of the unproven technologies, unknown cost, dual use uh, implications, and liability issue. But we are actually addressing this issue, overcoming this issue with examples. So it's time to take decisive actions globally and take. Uh, let's work together harder and then. Uh, let's secure the specificity for the kids and next generation. So thank you very much. <laughs>